By now you've read about the central limit theorem, um, how, it, how it's worked when you use it. I just wanted to define it for you again. It has to do with when you take a group of people and you want the probability of that sample mean being higher or lower than a certain value. So um, we're looking for probability again. Now section 5.3, you were going backwards. You started with probability or percent, and you wanted to go back to a real life value. Well, we have real life values in these, and we want to use percent. We're going to continue to do that normal CDF function, and we're still gonna work with boundaries. It's just when we're using the central limit theorem, our formula for a z-score is a little bit different because of the concept. We're not just looking for the probability of one person's score being greater than or less than a certain value. That's when we use the standard normal table. This time we have a group of people and we want the probability that their group mean is um, greater than or less than a certain value. That's the reason this distribution is much greater. Um, it has, you have a much higher frequency of people that are close to the mean than you do in a standard. The standard, the scores are a little bit more spread out. In the distribution of sample means, the scores are very, very close together. That's because you're, you're taking a group of people and averaging them together. So let's in the next slide, let's look at um, how we're going to do a problem and what the new z-score is when you have to use the central limit theorem. Okay, we're ready for um, a problem. If you need to pause the video so that you have a chance to uh, write it down, go ahead and do that. So now we have taken a group of people and if we scan through the problem, we see that we have selected, th whoops, sorry about that. We have selected 36, dang it, 36 employees. So we're taking a group of people and we want the probability that their mean age is a certain point. So that's when we're using the central limit theorem. Notice I did not say I randomly select one employee and what is the probability of his age being a certain value. This is a group of them. That's the central limit theorem. So we have a special z-score. Um, as you remember before, we always took our, our um, real life value that we were dealing with that we wanted the probability of. In this case, it's a mean, so we're going to use the symbol x bar. We're subtracting the population mean, only this time, instead of dis dividing by the standard deviation, you're going to divide by something called the standard devi the standard excuse me error of the mean. So this is the symbol there. It's the standard deviation symbol with a little x bar down there. And that's called standard error of the mean. And you only use it, error, um, when you're using the central limit theorem. And the standard error of the mean is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, your sample size. So if we rewrite this z-score that we use when we're doing the central limit theorem, it would look, now remember we need parentheses around the top. And in this case, you want parentheses around the bottom, it would look like this. Now let me warn you, your calculator will automatically, when you put a square root symbol, your calculator will automatically open a, a, a parentheses. You're going to put in your sample size, you're going to have to close those parentheses, and then you'll have to close a second set. So that's the z-score when you're using the central limit theorem. Let's plug it in with the numbers from this problem. So I want the probability that the mean age is greater than 49. So 49 is my boundary. And I've got to subtract the population mean, which is right there in the first sentence. The mean age of all employees, that's population, um, is 47.2. So that's my population mean. In my calculator, I'm going to do that with parentheses around the top. I'm going to hit divided by. I'm going to open a set of parentheses. Standard deviation is 3.6. I'm going to hit divided by. I'm going to hit a square root symbol. Your calculator will give you a parentheses. Uh, my sample size, that means how many people are in your group. It said I selected 36. I'm going to close the parentheses for the square root. Then I have to do another parentheses in my calculator and hit enter. And I got three, just whole number three. Remember, we want to round to two decimal places. Well, I don't have any de any uh, decimals here, so it's just three. That's okay. 
A 3.00 technically is what it is, but that's my z-score. Remember, that's your z-score. And if you recall, now is when you go into your normal CDF and you give it your z-score boundaries. I've got to be careful here when I um, think about my, my curve. In this case, uh, I want the probability of being greater than 49, which means um, I just found out that 49 has a um, z-score of 3, 3.00, and I want the probability of being greater than that, so that's this area off to the right. So in my normal CDF function, in this case, a z-score of 3 is my left boundary, and since this goes off into infinity, remember we use 10,000 without putting commas in as our upper bound. You're going to do that in your calculator, and you get 0 .0013. That's the probability that your their mean age is going to be greater than 49, so it's not likely to happen. This is the basis for so many court cases. Uh, this is how corporations get in trouble for discrimination. When they report that their employees are a certain um, age and then investigators take samples, they, can do, they will do this right here to determine whether or not it's conceivable that the sample um, would produce such a high or low probability. So that's, um, that's one example. You have other really good examples in your textbook. Um, that you're going to want to go through for practice just to kind of help. I just wanted you to at least have one problem where you could see this um, and hear it, the explanation and work. But please make sure you practice um, using the looking at the book example examples and the textbook problems before you um, attempt the uh, the quiz.